Attorney General Bill Barr testified under oath this week and basically wiped the floor with the Democrats. At this point, the Mueller report has been delivered. It's out there for everybody to see. No collusion, no obstruction charges. And the special counsel's office, it's been disbanded. It's over. But the Democrats can't let it go. Now they're concerned about Robert Mueller's feelings and still won't go let go of the witch hunt. Did anyone, either you or anyone on your staff, memorialize your conversation with Robert Mueller? Yes. Who did that? Uh, there were notes taken of, of the call. May we have those notes? No. Why not? Why should you have them? <laughs> Here with reaction, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. So I think the left is going nuts, Sarah, because we now have an AG that's strong and they can't deal with it. Um, now they're now calling him a liar after lying about collusion for two years, which is pretty rich. And, you know, I have the transcript of what he said. It, it, there's no lie there. It, it, they think we're dumb, uh, but we're not. Um, what do you think's going on here? I mean, they can't let it go. Are you prepared for this for the next two years? Uh, look, I don't think America's prepared for it. I think they're tired of it. They want to see uh, the Democrats and everybody else in Congress zero in and start focusing on the big problems that our country's facing. Jesse, I do have one correction, though, um, and I hate to correct you on oh, air on okay. your show. I'm nervous. But you said that the left is going nuts. The left has been nuts for a long time, <laughs> okay. particularly over the last two years, as they've pushed this outrageous I claim stand against corrected. the president. <laughs> it's absurd. And yeah. Bill Barr has done an excellent excellent job of pointing that out and showing them just how ridiculous they can be uh, over the course of this week when they continued to badger and pepper him with questions and he answered one after another uh, and pushed back against some of the more ridiculous claims that they yeah, made. Yeah, I mean, I that was just flawless execution. I know the president has said that he's been uh, very proud of his performance and I think most Americans are are happy that we have an AG that that stands up for the rule of law. One of the Absolutely. reasons the Democrats are going so crazy Sarah is because now he's starting to look at how the collusion hoax began and they need to bloody him up and destroy his credibility because as the IG report comes out and his report comes out and they declassify the FISA it's not going to look good for their side so they need to get in the dirty work now. Yeah, and one of the things that uh, I feel like a lot of the folks have glossed over, the reason that the Attorney General has done such a great job uh, answering these questions is because the facts are on his side. Exactly. He's been so transparent through the process. He understands the law. He's looked at this. He's examined it. Um, and he's one of the most brilliant legal minds, which everyone agreed with and supported that idea and talked about what a high quality individual he was until he came in to work for the Trump administration. And now, simply because uh, he's associated with the administration, they're beating him up. And that's really, it's true. It's truly sad to see the Democrats sink to this level. You think they can't go lower, and they always manage to do so. <laughs> yeah, uh, they've Bill disgraced has... themselves completely. Uh, the chicken stunt, the KFC, oh, the House Democrat Judiciary Committee are playing games. I wouldn't take them seriously if they're going to act so unserious. So, yeah, I, I think he's on firm ground and standing strong the way he is. Now, the great week for the Trump economy. America's booming under the president economic policies, massive GDP number 3.2 in the first quarter, and then April jobs numbers came out, 263,000 right there, continuing to uh, surprise the economists. The economists are always uh, surprised. It's, it's never <laughs> as, it's, they always predict low, and then it goes high, and they're always shocked. Yeah, it's amazing that they continue to be surprised right. uh, that the Trump economy is doing so well. I can tell you we're not surprised because we know that the president's policies are working. We know that deregulation is a good thing. We know that tax cuts are a good thing. The president has created an environment where businesses want to actually do business in America again. And it is a great thing to see. And I think we're going to continue to see a lot more of it from this president as long as we have the ability to keep pushing his agenda and his policies.
policies for the next six years. I mean, the Democrats now running on socialism, a lot of them running for president. You see Venezuela's up in flames. You have the best jobless rate since, I think, 50 years, the hottest economy since the late 90s. And the Democrats want to take that, the success of capitalism, and they want to turn it around and have socialism in America. How do you think that's going to play? It's truly mind-boggling. I don't know why anyone would vote for a system that they are literally watching crumble before their very eyes, particularly when they have one that's working so well. Under this president, American economy is booming, we're thriving, and we're doing better than we've done in a long time. Why would you change that? I don't think America will. I think they love the president, they love what's happening, and they love that they have more money in their pocket uh, to spend on the weekends, and I think it's a great thing what the president's doing. Yeah, consumer confidence and consumer spending are up big time. So you were, uh, last week, you dissed the Correspondence Center. You were out in Wisconsin in Green Bay. You had some fun on the stage with the president. Let's roll the tape. Last year, this night, I was at a slightly different event. Uh, not quite the best welcome, so this is an amazing honor. I'm so proud to work for the president. She's becoming too popular. I'm jealous. Sarah, you're fired! Better be careful, Sarah. You gotta, you gotta be very careful. Yeah, I, I, I'm taking a step back, but uh, thankfully the president uh, has a great sense of humor and was just kidding. And uh, when I showed up on Monday, I still had a place here uh, at the White House, and I, I couldn't be happier. I love working for the president, and I'm really proud to get to do that and proud of everything that he's doing. And I think he's got a great story to tell, and I'm just glad to be a little part of it. How's the president going to celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Uh, I will see. I don't know. I'm sure he'll let us all know. Maybe he'll uh, call into your show later this weekend. Who knows? I don't know. All right. We'll see. Maybe a taco bowl or two. Um, <laughs> you're looking forward to the next press briefing? Um, I mean, I, I could just see you out there. Anytime they say anything, you say, how are you supposed to believe the thing you guys say? You guys lied about collusion for two years. Yeah, exactly. Look, we take questions from the press every single day. I took uh, questions from reporters uh, yesterday morning for quite a bit of time and continue to do that. Uh, happy to do it anywhere, anytime, any place. All right. Sarah Sanders, but there she is. Mostly on your show, Jesse. That's right. Watch out for those fastballs, Sarah. All right. <laughs> Try not to get fired. <laughs> Thanks. All right. What Donald Trump has done are impeachable offenses. If Donald Trump wants to push us into impeachment proceedings, he's doing a good job of trying to push us to go there. Yes, the, the president committed impeachable offenses. Certainly, I, I think there are grounds for impeachment. Grounds for impeachment. Well, Democrats have not given up their calls to push the president out, but voters don't seem to agree. Support has reached a new low in a Quinnipiac poll, only 29% saying he should be impeached. So a Democratic attacks on the president proving to be pointless. Here to debate, Democratic strategist and our friend Jason Nichols and host of the Michael Knowles Show. Of course, he would be named Michael Knowles. Good morning to both of you. Good morning, Ed. Good to see you. Jason, as Lindsey Graham said this week, it's over. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> well, again, I think people are looking at this all wrong, Ed. I don't think that impeachment, it does not mean removal. It's a process of inquiry. And obviously through Bob Mueller's letter, uh, some of the really abnormal things we've seen from Bill Barr and many others, there's reason to want to see more and to uh, want to, you, to let well, Congress do Well, let me challenge you job, real quick, and then I'll get Michael in here. Pardon me, which is, uh, you know, I can't let all that stand. You say the weirdness from Bill Barr. So he's the attorney general. The special counsel reports to him. He says, give me the report. He gets the report, and then he puts over 400 pages out there for you and Michael and the whole world to see. Where did he go wrong? Well, again, people have, have asked for the unredacted report. He will not yeah. allow for that to happen. In addition, he didn't come back uh, when asked by Congress. Congress's role is oversight. That's one of their major roles. Mm -hmm. And he, is, uh, he was against that. And I think that's a real problem. Okay. If he wants to join Trump's legal team, I, I would say go ahead and do that. All right. Again, you're, you're, you're going after Bill Barr. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's get Michael in here. I, I, I didn't hear Jason answer the central question. The public doesn't want impeachment, and yet he and Democrats seem to want the, this to be an open question. 
Why would they want impeachment? You've got unemployment at 49 year lows. You've got average wages up to 27.77 per hour. The stock market cannot stop rising. Is the Democrats' pitch here, let us impeach Trump and then everything will get worse again? I don't think that's going to sell. But Democrats have this central problem, which is that the majority of voters overwhelmingly reject impeachment. The majority of Democrats still support impeachment. So short of impeachment, they're going after Trump. They're going after Barr. This is really playing with fire. Mueller time is over. It's time to pl pay the bar tab. I think they are very afraid of what the Attorney General is going to find when he digs into the origins of some of those politically motivated investigations I see that we've all endured for two years. Mueller time is over. It's time to pay the bar tab. Jason, I can't say it better. How do you answer that? Final word. Uh, again, I, I think that we need to understand about what impeachment is. It's not about, it's not a popularity contest. There's a reason that impeachment is not a referendum. It is uh, the role of Congress. And if the president has uh, committed impeachable offenses, then we've got to go through with the process. Uh, it sounds to be, Michael, last word from you, that Democrats don't want to accept the reality. Maybe their base is pressing the leaders to keep this open. What, do you, what say you? We're arguing over some letter that Barr wrote or some conversation on the phone with Bob Mueller. All of this is secondary. The Mueller report is out. We can read it. I think all of us here have read the Mueller report, all of the relevant sections. It exonerates the president. Sorry, Democrats. <laughs> it's time to move on. It oh. actually says it doesn't yeah. exonerate the president. That's all exactly right. what it says it does not do. Jason, I gave you the final word a couple of times. <laughs> you still haven't made the case. We <laughs> shall see where this all goes. Jason, Michael, always good to have you. In on the weekend. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Ed. Good to see right. you. Devin Nunes vowing to take action following this blockbuster New York Times report detailing the FBI's effort to spy on the Trump 2016 presidential campaign. So who were the key players and what questions could the Obama White House face? Joining me now, former assistant director of the FBI's training division, Mark Morgan. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. So, uh, first of all, a couple of weeks back, the Attorney General Bill Barr said under oath before Congress there were spying in the 2016 campaign and there was a collective freak out in Washington. Now even the New York Times is saying, hmm, yeah, basically there was spying. Right. And, and it's just a distraction. It's kind of like, is it a physical barrier or a wall? A spying? Okay. So you can call it the use of sensitive, uh, investigative, covert uh, techniques to further uh, in, a counterintelligence investigation. Or you could call it spying. Tomato, tomato. The, the point is, the FBI, th they have the authority and the, and the legal authority to do just that, to spy, to use covert tactics. That's not the issue. The issue is, was it done appropriately under the legal framework and within the Department of Justice policy? That's the question. That's what Nunes was talking about. That's what Barr's talking about. That's the oversight. It's correct. So let's go through some of the key players and, and understand from you as a former FBI official how we'll get these answers. Um, George Papadopoulos, of course, was approached by this woman who he says was flirting with him back in 2016 and trying to get information. He felt like maybe it was entrapment. Uh, you see the key players on the screen. James Comey, uh, Andrew McCabe, Peter Strzok. These were some of the folks who were uh, pushing to approve the surveillance, the spying, whatever you want to call it. How do you get to the bottom? of exactly what happened. You have to bring them in. You have to keep talking to them. And, and all those players you just listened are just right. And this is what the American people need to understand. An investigation at this level into a presidential campaign, it absolutely would have gone to the highest levels. That means Jim Comey. Absolutely, hands down, McCabe, all the rest of the players. They're key, and they've got to be talked to, hands down. What about Azra Turk? I met her a moment ago, the woman who approached uh, George Papadopoulos for drinks. Uh, he suggested that she was flirting, that maybe she uh, wanted to entrap him in some way. What do we know about her now and what do we need to do um, you know, collectively to kind of figure out what really happened? So we still don't know a lot about who this individual is for sure. Uh, more than likely than not, it was probably the undercover FBI agent. But the flirting, et cetera, that, that, that's not an issue. Um, it, it, that, that's covert operations. That's what a confidential human source does, or that's what an undercover agent does. They try to elicit information. Again, there's no problem with that. You have to go back to the predication. Was the predication adequate to even start this investigation? What were the motives of these key players that you just listed? Mm -hmm. That's the key. Who did this? Why did this? And was there a violation of, of the, the framework, the legal framework or policies in DOJ? That's what we need to get to. And there are serious questions about that. 
Last question. Bill Barr is the one who, as Attorney General, is saying he's going to get to the bottom of this. There could be criminal prosecutions and the like. He said something else that caught my ear real quick, which is that he said a few days ago under oath that if the FBI and, and the government in general had only used this woman we mentioned, the professor who's been mentioned, that would be a p pretty paltry surveillance operation. He seemed to be suggesting, Mark, that there could be a whole lot more spying that he might know about, but we don't know about yet, meaning that th this is pretty small potatoes. There could be a lot more. Uh, I, I think he's right. A a absolutely hands down. That's why we need to continue to take a look at this. All right. Mark Morgan, we appreciate your insights this morning. You bet.